Hello everyone, uh, we're going to start Unit 6, which is Molecular Symmetry. What is Molecular Symmetry? Well, symmetry can be identified in pretty much everything that we see around us. And it can be applied to allow us to predict certain information about molecules. So for example, we're gonna, we, we'd be able to predict the infrared spectra. We would be able to describe different types of orbitals used in bonding. We could predict optical activity. We could interpret electronic spectra, um, give us information of many additional molecular properties. And we could even go further with advanced molecular orbital theory, which uses the concepts of symmetry. Now, you've seen a little bit of this when we did bonding theories where we spoke about Gerada and Ungerada orbitals. This is as a result of symmetry. Okay, we're just going to mainly focus on identifying symmetry in molecules. So we're gonna look at how to identify them, what can we characterize the symmetry elements and that kind of thing. So let's first start off with some definitions. The first one is a symmetry element. Uh, now that means that this is this is a thing that is available that causes something to happen. So for example, we have a mirror plane, and we have a rotation axis, or we have an inversion center. And I will explain more about these a little bit later on. Then we have the symmetry operation. Okay, now this is what happens when we use the element. So for example, if we had a mirror plane, what does a mirror do? Well, it reflects. So the operation is then called a reflection. So we have, again, rotation. That's caused by a rotation axis. And an inversion would be caused by an inversion center. Now, for us to get a symmetry element, um, or for a molecule to contain a symmetry element, rather, like a mirror plane or rotation axis or an inversion center, the molecule must have the exact same appearance after the operation. So, for example, if we were to apply a reflection, a rotation or an inversion, it must look the same as before when we started. Okay, all molecules are going to be described in terms of their symmetry, even if it only says that they don't have any symmetry. Okay. So on this slide, you will see two examples. The one on the left um, has what we call um, a threefold rotation axis, and the one on the right has a twofold rotation axis. Okay, we'll deal a bit more in detail with this later on. Um, but I think where we need to start is we st start with the simplest symmetry um, operation, which is called the identity operation. Now, this is really easy because we don't do anything to the thing except turn it 360 degrees. Now, the identity element operation is given the symbol E. There's effectively no change in how the molecule looks, and it's included for mathematical completeness. It's a rotation, which is the operation of an object through an axis, which is the element of 360 degrees. So if we looked at this molecule at the bottom here, for example, and we turned it 360 degrees, so I'll, t I'll try to draw this for you. Um, if we go clockwise and I turn it 360 degrees like this, it looks exactly the same as when we started at the beginning. There's no change to the molecule whatsoever. And generally, you will find that there are an, every, every molecule has the identity operation, every single one. OK, let's move on to the second one. We're, we're, we're going to deal with three in this uh, section of the unit. And this one that we're dealing with here on slide six is called the n-fold rotation. And it's given the symbol C. And there are two... Uh, uh, topics or things that we can talk about here, this here, this N and the M, okay? And we will see what those are. So the rotation operation is also called a proper rotation. Um, it's generally an operation or rotation 
through a 360 degree divided by n um, about a rotation axis. So, for example, now the identity operation is 360 degrees divided by 1, okay? Um, and we'll look at the others in a minute, okay? So, Cn is the axis with the highest n value. So, for example, if we have C1, that means it's a 360 degree rotation, it will turn 360 degrees, n is equal to 1. And it's normally assigned to the z axis, and we then have consecutive rotations can be designated by the superscript M. Now let, let me, let me uh, uh, demonstrate for you. Let's take a look at the, this example over here. Okay, so this is called a C2 axis, all right? And the reason it's a C2 is because it, there's a, a rotation of 180 degrees. So that's 360 degrees divided by 2. It means that I start here with this atom that's got a little star over it, and I work 360, sorry, 180 degrees round to this position where we end up over here. Okay, and that's called a C2 axis, and there will be two of them to get back to the original molecule. All right, let's have a look now at this diagram on the right-hand side, this one here where we have a C3 axis. So if I start at this position here with this atom, right over here, and I turn 120 degrees, remember 360 divided by 3 gives me 120, so I turn the molecule 120 degrees, so I go this way, what happens is that the atom now ends up here, now I do another 120 degree rotation, and the atom now ends up over here. And if I was to do a third uh, 120 degree rotation, I would end up back at the beginning over here. Okay. And in order to understand this notation at the top here, you will see that there is a description of this here. It's a C3. Now remember the principal rotation axis is the subscript. And the number of times that you do it is the superscript. If you are unclear, stop the video and replay what I've said. Okay, so we have a C3, and it means that we've done it twice, which means that the position of the, of the, the starting atom up here has moved to here, 1, and here, 2. Okay. There are a number of other views that we can have a look at and see how the uh, n-fold rotation works. So on the top diagram, this diagram over here, you will see that we are able to follow a fluorine um, atom moving through 120 degree rotations. Okay, there are other views as well um, where we'll, we'll, we, we, we can look at this particular diagram here where we see that we have a C3 axis that goes through the center, so it goes directly through like this, okay? And if you're able to see this, then the C3 can go one, two, and three, like that. That is a C3 axis, okay? This molecule also has a C2 axis. I'm going to change the color of the pen so that you can see what I'm talking about. If I, if I start on the top diagram, you will see that I can draw a C2 axis here that will, I can flip the molecule along this. So if I to hold this, this piece here and I turn it, there I could get 180 degree rotation in that direction like that. Okay, so I turn it a full 180 degrees. And this diagram at the bottom shows the C2 axes along here. There's one there, and there's one along there, and there's another one along here. Okay, now in first year you were given a um, modeling kit. I suggest that you try to build these models and then play with the symmetry yourself. Or if you can't do that, and you're able to get to a shop to buy a bag of sweeties and some toothpicks, you can build the models 
and watch the symmetry elements for yourself. Okay, in this last diagram over here, let me change back to the black pen, this diagram here, we have a C3 axis, um, which, is donate, which is denoted in the diagram. Now let's have a look at the reflection. The reflection operation is given the Greek symbol sigma. The element is a mirror plane and the operation is the reflection. Okay, we have three different types of reflections that we can look at. The first one is called a sigma V, which is a vertical reflection, okay, or a vertical mirror plane. The second one is called a sigma H, which is a horizontal one. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's have a look at water. We can, we can divide water with two planes, okay? Um, the first plane is this one over here, and the second plane is this one over here. Now, I know this is difficult to see in two dimensions, but you should be able to see that this here is reflected to there, that position, and then this mirror plane here that I've marked runs through the, the molecule in a, a horizontal fashion. Okay, sorry, vertical fashion. All right, so there we have the C2 rotation axis and we have two vertical mirror planes. Okay, vertical means that it cuts the molecule in a vertical fashion. If we had to look at this example, you would see that we would have a C3 principal axis and there's a horizontal mirror plane that, that dissects the molecule horizontally. Um, so this green section here would be the mirror plane and that's called a horizontal mirror plane. You get a third reflection called a sigma D. This is a diagonal mirror plane um, and it's used to indicate the orientation from the principal axis where... Okay, so the sigma diagonal plane is going to bisect the angle between a pair of rotational C2 axes. So the best way to see this is with an example. Okay, so there would be a sigma D um, mirror plane. If I took that as a C2 axis, you can see that this half of the molecule can be rotated to that half of the molecule. There's also a mirror plane there, by the way. Um, but if I show you the second C2 axis, which is that one there, okay, then we have this mirror plane here is in between the two C2 axes and it's called the sigma D. There's some alternative views that you can look at for these mirror planes. Um, for example, this is a vertical mirror plane. Um, the blue sort of sheet that you see over here, if I mark it with a cross like that, that's a horizontal mirror plane. And then it shows you the other things that you've already seen. So you will see the diagonal mirror plane. Remember that a diagonal mirror plane is one that is um, able to be uh, visible between two principal axes. So we have along here, we have a C2 axis. Okay, there's a C2 here. And along here, we also have a C2 axis. And then obviously then there would be the diagonal mirror plane um, over here. And of course, this has a, a fourfold rotation axis. So um, in the middle, we're able to rotate this by uh, C4. So that means that it goes through 90 degrees, four times. Okay, uh, on the picture on the um, uh, right hand side will show you the mirror planes uh, for water as a good example. Okay, you can see that these are vertical mirror planes. So um, you get a reflection that takes place uh, for both of the mirror planes. So 
this mirror plane bisects the molecule this way, okay, and this um, mirror plane down here will bisect the molecule this way, okay. And there's some alternative views to help you see this as well, also using the water molecule. All right, that completes this section of the unit. We will continue with the other uh, symmetry operators and elements in the next unit.